We're sitting down here today to talk with Pauline Scanlon, who is a Dingle native. She is an Irish singer, a singer of contemporary and traditional Irish music. And um, she has a really strong um, active history of being involved in raising awareness and helping raising funds for the cause of Palestine and specifically now what's happening in Gaza. So um, I want to start off with a little bit more broad questions. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about your career, your background? What drew you to traditional Irish music? What drew you to singing? Um, well, I'm from West Kerry and I grew up in a place where there was lots of music and in a family where there was lots of music. Um, and I've just always done it. I've been singing since I was about four. Um, there was a teacher in school and nun in the school that I went to at home in West Kerry and she used to bring me around to all the older classes when I started in school singing for the older kids and so I always knew I could do it and then I suppose I started gigging in the pub in the pubs around home when I was about 15 and I'm 45 now so it's a long time so I've just I've just always done it and yeah I love it. Um, I would love to talk a little bit about I don't know if it's called a group or an initiative that you started Fair Play which you created it to promote gender equality um, in the music industry. Can you tell us like a little bit about your motivation for creating that and what are some of the aims? Well that began with myself and um, a few of my female colleagues um, in and around 2018 I guess we were just talking about how um, male dominated I suppose initially we were very much uh, women in the folk and traditional realm or genre and culture wider community for want of a better word but um, and we had just noticed that lineups and um, just the demographic across the our professional world and also because I go I guess traditional music straddles both the kind of a profession but also a hobby and for some people it's both so it's kind of it's a broader culture and community um that uh it was particularly it was male orientated and driven and um I suppose in many ways reflective of society in general in terms of the gender biases and that and that evolved then very kind of quickly on to addressing issues around sexual assault and harassment within the culture, within the workspaces, within the community. And uh, so we did a lot of work around that and continue to do a lot of work around that, actually. Um, it's something that is changing, I think, but it's, it's, it feels very slow. It doesn't feel like it's fast enough. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm still quite active in, in that world as well. Yeah. So what are some of the like concrete goals that you would like to see in the traditional music space around gender equality? I would like um, for there an end to sexual harassment and assault in the workplace and in the environments. I would like to see uh, a lot more diversity um, across all things, really, I guess, in the programming, genders and ethnicities and that kind of thing. Um, I guess I would like to see, I would like to see um, power structures and gatekeepers and tastemakers. Um, I would like to see more diversity within that, within, I suppose, the industry itself. I think that would probably reflect better on the, on the culture um, in that instance. So, you know, I suppose, yeah, they, they'd be kind of the main things. Yeah. Have you noticed, you know, you have like a, a, such a long history in this industry. Have you noticed things have gotten any better throughout your career or have they pretty much stayed the same? Um, I think I'm probably not the right person to ask because through the work that we did, there was a huge kind of um, kickback or um, backlash from within certain factions or elements or disciplines, ideologies. I don't know what you want to call it within the broader community or culture so I guess it, what, where, where on one hand I see huge change and people broadening out and becoming much more inclusive and diverse I'm also aware of another realm of people that just want us to go away and shut up okay. and you know stop it. yeah so maybe <laughs> even just the fact of getting more light shed on these issues is the change in and of itself 
I understand. Yeah, and also then that, that light kind of shines light on other elements, I suppose, that for somebody like me are quite uncomfortable, but yeah. I think it has to be, I think it has to be done, yeah. I think it's been a since we kind of brought it to the fore in 2018. I think the co at least the conversation has been normalized, and you know people are definitely paying more attention. And I definitely see, even if it's just in a tokenistic way, it's a start. Um, you know, the things are getting more inclusive and more diverse. You know, so that's good. Um, have you always felt a connection between? your music, your art and like social activism or at what point did you really start to feel that connection? I've always felt that connection because I think I suppose I've just felt I, I, it's a very um, inherent thing. I don't kind of, it's never been a decision or it, it just feels like a very natural space for me to exist in. Um, and I think as I've progressed, as, as I've grown as a woman, as I've progressed along my my life's journey, I guess, I suppose I look for it more in art in general and that's that's the music I listen to and that's that's kind of what interests me and I kind of filter out the, the other stuff like it's funny like because I've been talking to a lot of our activists lately on all my, on all sorts of things from a housing crisis to whatever whatever it may be, the things that people become invested in. But I think there's a real um link between art and activism but not necessarily entertainment and activism and I think there's kind of quite a quite a difference there you know I think the the kernel of art that the central ideas and the, the place that it comes from is somewhere similar to general social activism but I think once that then breaks out into the world of entertainment it becomes kind of compromised in some way and it's the best way I can articulate it but you know what I mean <laughs> it's no it's very interesting I actually never thought about it from that perspective but it makes mm. a lot of sense yeah so I guess going along with that then um what do you think the role is of artists in society in helping push for solidarity and and bringing awareness to different um human rights causes or other social causes I think it depends on the artist, you know, I think it's hard to kind of generalize from my own perspective across the arts, like what the role of all artists are, because, you know, some artists, I suppose, have a very direct way of saying things and others, maybe not so much. It might be a bit more kind of subversive or a bit, just a bit more subtle or abstract, you know, but I think, I suppose, art reflects community mm -hmm. or art reflects the world around us and you see you absorb it and you put it back out again so I think outside of the we all have platforms and we all have social media I think what we it's important to remember that art or in my case singing is a verb and it happens in a in a space with people and I think it has the power to articulate um, things that transcend anger or horror and you can bring other motivating emotions. I'm, I'm quoting a friend of mine, Creva Butterly at the moment, who really pointed that out to me at, the, at, you know, at times along the road, you know, that we have the power to um, bring nuance and motivate people from, from another place. And I'm not saying there isn't a place for rallies or demonstrations of all kinds but I you know that there there are other ways and I think that art really does have the power to open people's hearts and minds and for ideas and um protest in in in, in another way to kind of settle within us and I I I have seen that yeah I totally agree I totally agree you can really get to people's hearts in a different way um, yeah. So I want to ask you a little bit about, you know, throughout your career, you've done a lot to draw attention to what's happening in Palestine and also recently you've been involved in a number of fundraisers. And so I, I'd like you to talk, if you can, a little bit about what first um, drew your attention to this issue. When did you first become aware of it and what made you want to become involved with with that? Well, controversially, when I was about 19, um, ignorant, uneducated and, you know, bouncing from nightclub to nightclub around Europe, 
I wound up in Israel doing a few gigs and my uneducated, ignorant 19-year-old self, I mean, it was years ago now, I was just, I had no idea. I had no idea. I had no clue. And I went there and I was just bowled over. I mean, I can still even transport myself back to it. I was just horrified at um, the apartheid system and regime that I witnessed, at the racism um, of the social construct there, I guess, you know. Um, and it just shocked me to my very core. And I kind of came home from there, um, motivated to, I suppose, look deeper into it. And, and I, I guess it just maybe that's where the activist me somewhere, there was a genesis there that somewhere happened for that. But I've always been involved since then in all manner of solidarity events, but always through through the music, you know, through performing at things and singing at things. And um, yeah, so I've, I've since then I've been involved in that, but it was really, it was really so deeply shocking to me at the time coming from my little West Perry home, you know, that I just right. never dreamt that something like that, you know, um, existed. If you don't mind, can you share a little bit more um, details about when you actually went to Israel and, and what was it that made you realize that like something wasn't right or it wasn't what you thought it was going to be like I'm thinking specifically we this past week there is like all over social media we have like a very famous um comedian actress her name is Tiffany Haddish and she had this big controversy because she she said I'm gonna go to Israel to see for myself everyone keeps talking and I want to see things for myself and obviously it was like in a promotional way um and so I'm wondering, what was it about your trip that you actually mm. did see for yourself? Um, and what made you realize that, you know, something wasn't right? That, that yeah. I guess what I felt when I went there, because I went there as a singer, is that I felt that I was, I could see very clearly. And it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily something that was being hidden from either, that I was part of a culture washing, legitimizing exercise. So there was things like, I, I was shocked that it, it just felt like kind of being in a really fundamentalist America and the birthright Israel. I was unaware of any of that. I was only 19. Um, and I, I remember one thing in particular, like it's actually quite a long time ago, but I remember one thing in particular, you know, the way um, somebody talking to me about um, swear words and, um, talking about that, that the, all the swear words that they use are Arabic. And I, I just remember like tonally at times when I was there, just, just feeling really uncomfortable. And I guess because I had gone there and I didn't really have any background knowledge or I wasn't looking out for anything. It was just part of a, a jigsaw that was kind of coming together for me yeah. day to day. I was there for five days or something. Um, and I just, I just came out of it just really with completely new, altered and improved world view. And, yeah. um, yeah, so it was, you know, I learned a lot very quickly. Thank you for sharing that. It's, it's a very interesting perspective to have had that experience yourself and then like had this realization come out of it. I think it, it's very powerful. Um, I know you're a part of uh, Irish Arts for Palestine, this group. So can you tell me a little bit about how this group was formed? Um, what are some of the goals of this group and what are some of the things that they're doing? Irish Arts for Palestine came about because um, there's people... Um, Friends who um, are part of Korja Bielfirsta, um, which is uh, Korja Palestine Bielfirsta, and um, after October seventh, um, <clears throat> when the um, onslaught and, and at the beginning of the genocide, we just got in contact with each other, and it was just person to person. It was just like, you know, what can we do? What do we do? And out of that was born. Um, I guess we felt that it was important um, because we do, because we are activists through art, that we harnessed all of the activists that we could possibly think of to join together to um, A, raise money, but also um, to um, 
put some political pressure on our own government to act and to send messages of solidarity. And, you know, when you're watching a genocide un unfold on your phone, a lot of the time you feel really silly doing it. You know, you feel like, you know, what in the name of God am I doing here? You know, it's a drop in the ocean, but <clears throat> the alternative is not to do it. And that's not really an, a viable alternative, you know. And I think people, I think people care really, really deeply here because it's been discussed at nauseum, hasn't it? You know that the commonalities and the post-colonial com commonalities here, and the co current colonial commonalities here between here and Palestine. And I think Irish people do do feel it and see it, the injustice, very deeply and sincerely, and you know, um, we'll, we'll, we'll keep standing with Palestine for as long as we have to stand with Palestine. I think it's interesting that, you you know, you say it has been discussed so much about why there is such a strong solidarity between Ireland and Palestine or between Irish people and Palestinians. But I think for those outside of Ireland and even for what I've seen personally, like I'm an Irish American, my grandparents were born and raised in Ireland and I've seen a lot of other like Irish Americans don't understand that you know people who even if they may claim Irish heritage or Irish identity outside of you know if they haven't grown up in Ireland they don't understand why there is such a, a strong connection and and more so than other European countries and perhaps like the most out of all European countries that um Ireland has taken you know maybe not the government but the people of ireland have taken such a strong stance in support of palestine and so maybe you can talk if you don't mind a little bit about that even though it has been discussed a lot here but for people who don't necessarily know why that this is happening like i mean the this was in your country that have been colonized um and also we're a country that is also split and we have a border on our island. And so there are six counties that are still colonized. Um, and we have had a famine, which I guess you, other people or people frame, or it can, it should be, I guess, called a genocide because it was inflicted upon us. Um, <clears throat> we've had a lot of cultural erosion in terms of our customs and language. Right literally driven off the coast of the island. Um, so there are commonalities in our story, I guess, in terms of oppression and that there is also then the spirit of resistance. And that's very strong here. And we understand that. Um, and we understand and feel deeply the right of people to resist. And I think maybe the key to it is somewhere in, in that, from my own perspective anyway, you know, um, that that's a very key part of it is, is the right to resistance. And I think we do understand that. I think as well, we understand that. I think when people look at Palestine, that it's like a homogenous group of people, maybe from, from other, you know, whereas I guess, you know, Ireland, we understand that even within republicanism and nationalism, that there are different colours and there are different shades on political perspectives and that not everybody who comes from a um, nation, it, you know, has, has the same exact, you know, that we're not a homogenous bunch. And I think we get maybe the diversity of that. So I think the complexity of it, of it is just kind of inherently understood to a greater deal. By no means do I... Um, mean to say that I have a an understanding of it of it all, but I, I feel like yeah. I understand it to to that degree. You know, really struck by what you said before about kind of the difference between entertainment and art, and you know, again, as someone who grew up like as an Irish American, uh, traditional Irish music and Irish folk music was like very much a heavy part of our culture. And in the U.S., you, there's a lot of Americans who listen to traditional Irish music, claim it as part of their culture, but maybe they don't have that um, connection to the art side of it, to that, you know, kind of inherently political um, nature. You know, I don't know if you would agree with this or not, but like in a lot of ways, I think traditional Irish music in and of itself was a part of resistance, right? 100%. Like to sing in Irish 
is an act of resistance, you know, yeah. I mean, to saying, you know, I mean, you are resisting by continuing and embodying a language that has been under threat from an oppressive entity, for want of a, 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 a generous term, I guess, um, that it is an act of resistance, you know, mm -hmm. so folk culture and culture and, you know, the culture of everyday music between people, between communities and in communities. Um, to me, it's an inherently political thing, you know, I, I think. But, I mean, people have different definitions of what they find to be political, you know. I wanted to ask a little bit more about something. Actually, you had mentioned this earlier um, when we were talking. Some of the challenges that maybe you faced in, in doing your activist work within um, the art scene and within the music scene. Um, you know, what are some of the backlashes that you faced and has it had any kind of impacts on your professional or your personal life? Um, either with, you know, you talked a little bit about um, with working with gender equality, um, with Palestinian solidarity or with any other causes. Well, I guess I can take them in isolation, like, yeah. but I guess in the gender equality dimension, there are a load of people or there are, are people who think that's a load of rubbish, who don't believe in patriarchy and, you know, um, and I suppose the argument or their perspective or how they view people, women particularly who, who are like me and who work in the capacity that I do is that we're opportunistic and looking to feather our own nests and get gigs for ourselves. Now, there are far easier ways of doing that, I can tell you. But, um, so I guess I've definitely... Over the years, I know there are people who would never work with me or never um, hire me again because of, and and my colleagues, you know, my comrades and, you know, very similarly, but that's fine. You know, that's, that's all okay. Um, I think there was a really, with that activism, there was a real, the challenge was to convince um, culture and a community that it, it is an issue and that even if it's an issue for a smaller group of people, that that's still an issue and that that warrants support and, and that that warrants attention. Um, I think the difficulties with mm. art activism in relation to Palestine and Gaza at the moment, particularly at the start of um, this recent campaign was um, a lot of artists, I suppose, a lot of, but some artists being very cautious around political language and really feeling like they were going to say the wrong thing or feeling, you know, there was issues around using certain words and certain terms and, you know, some venues wouldn't be comfortable with it. And, you know, it, that was quite a struggle. Um, and I think, unfortunately, and really so terribly, terribly sadly, really no longer an issue because it's just become really really apparent and um, you know it's it's had to get to this stage and at this stage I don't think that's really really an issue for people now but it was at the start um I also noticed that um we have uh, a lot of people from the north of Ireland um who work uh, with us in Irish Artists for Palestine and due to the more politicized culture there far more comfortable with the language around mm -hmm. the political language and the language around resistance and the language around um, all of it, really. And I find that perhaps in the South, um, I get black for saying that, but it's people are less confident, I would say, with, with the language. So what would you say to someone, you know, if another artist came to you and said that they wanted to talk more openly and more publicly and, and try to raise more awareness, but they were afraid of some backlash they might receive. I'd say now you're in the majority, you won't get any, hmm. you know, it really is the way now you see it with, it's just, there's no, there's no backlash, you know? And I mean, right. backlash, I think backlash, it's just not a thing, you know, there's bots on Twitter and all of that. I think, think really where the backlash I think now you're almost conspicuous in your absence hmm. you know more so than it's costing you anything like it really isn't you know what I would say is that you know I guess activism is a verb so <clears throat> maybe use your skills to 
post something or put something on rather than I think I suppose people see the screen and social media and your platform as being the way to do stuff and it's it is a way to do stuff and you definitely do stuff and you get the word out there about stuff but I I feel there's probably more that pe people can do in terms of gathering people together and using your art in the way we spoke about earlier to really infuse um, truth and uh, empathy and whatever it is that you feel about it um, into groups of people in, in real time. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think I'm probably feeling that that's, 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 a very, that's a good thing to do. And I think apart from that, we're all just citizens, BDS, mm. feet on the street, you know, you're, you know, bother your politicians, demand what you what you feel they need to be doing for us, you know. Yeah. So what is some advice that you would give to like artists who are just starting out, newer artists? Maybe they want to take more concrete steps like you've taken in forming Fair Play and Irish Artists for Palestine. Um, what would you say to them? Find your tribe and contact those organizations and put the hand up and say you'd like to be involved and you'd like to do some work. You know, I was listening to a podcast with Bernadette Michalski the other day and uh, it was, I think it was Left Block or it was the podcast. I can't remember quite which one it was. And she was just saying, you know, that lots of people have really great ideas, but they don't want to do the work. And I think that to contact the organizations or the groups of people or even the artist, if you see an artist who has a stance on something that you believe vehemently in or you feel that you have something to say or to contribute to, be it climate change, be it whatever, contact the artist, contact the organization, contact the political party, you know, um, all of those things, I think, and just put the hand up and there are loads of jobs and you'll get them. So is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Anything you'd like to mention that we didn't get to? I would like to say that we're in the process at the moment of um, just sharing around the notion of St. Patrick's Day and um, how we have the freedom to express and to celebrate our national day uh, internationally um, in mm -hmm. the, all across the diaspora and in America and, you know, communities that have sprung up from immigrants and refugees all over the world um, because we have the freedom to do it but we need to share this day and platform Palestine um, on St. Patrick's Day and I think I think it would be a really powerful thing if we could do that on a global scale you know and um, yeah so that would be my that would be all I would add is, is you know yeah. it lets shout it loud and proud. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. And I, I fully agree. Definitely as someone who grew up celebrating St. Patrick's Day in New Jersey, right. <laughs> um, it does. It has a very far reaching global impact for sure. Okay, well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk.